Um, I think everybody was really interested in uh, in bringing Gollum into the story. Um, clearly, is such an iconic character, and um, and we know that he was in Mordor at the time of uh, the events of our story. So it just seemed very organic to um, um, wave him into the narrative. Um, I really like how in the footage we've seen so far, when we've seen Mordor, it, it looks it looks beautiful almost. It's it's like lush and green, and, and it, looks, it looks kind of like a nice place to live. Um, do you want to... What was that? Because this is like in between. Like um, this is after like the last alliance conflict, and this is before like uh, Sauron takes that over. So, what do you think of that? And getting to kind of depict Mordor as a place that wasn't like this awful like like death city. Um, that first of all, you're exactly right. Our story takes place between the events of uh, the Hobbit and the beginning of the Lord's Rings. So. Um, in, in, in that period of when Sauron returns to Mordor, um, Mordor wasn't the wasteland that uh, become, the land becomes after uh, it slowly takes over, uh, his control, exerts his control back. And it, particularly to me as a storyteller, um, that was a, a very interesting period to tell a story in, um, because whenever you have a world that's on the, ver on the verge of collapse and something new is done. Um, it, it, it makes for like, it, it puts great pressure on your characters and characters really come alive when they're under pressure. Um, so I, I think that almost like in a, in, in a, in a, in a great story, like a post-apocalyptic story or a western story, when you have these worlds that are about to end and the new order is about to start, people lose their sense of identity, they um, lose uh, control of the flow of events because a new current is written in the way. And so it seemed ideal to that story. Uh, so I'm assuming, did you create uh, Talion and, and what was the genesis of that character? Talion is an original character that we've created uh, based on a lot of the um, Character traits and, uh, and and the style of these personalities that we've uh, uh, found in, in books for the second middle or public and, and um, to us is a little bit of like the tragic figure in in Boromir and in a way is the what if. Um, Boromir had taken the ring. What if, um, what if he had power um, in him that would allow him to um, carry on his glory and start from a desire to fight for justice and then what would happen uh, with all that power? And clearly, Talion doesn't have a ring, but um, he, is, he, he has great power. Um, since Shadow of Mordor is going to be taking place between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, is the game going to pretty much just stop at The Lord of the Rings trilogy, or is it going to be planned for multiple sequels? Um, I don't think we have... I don't think we're discussing how the story is going to end and potentially it's going to evolve, so I, I don't really have a, an answer for you, but um, there are certainly decades um, of storytelling that can happen there, and this particular story doesn't span the entirety of the time that, um, that we, we could, if we want it. Uh, feel with stories. Uh, Chris, can you give us any insight on the wraith who resurrects Talion in his identity? Is this like one of the ghosts that might have been in the past of the dead um, in the original, in the main trilogy? I think I can say who the wraith is, right? Um, so the, um, the wraith is actually uh, Calabrimber. Calabrimber is um, one of the greatest elves of the Second Age, who is uh, a great uh, smithy, and he uh, is famous in the in the middle of lore for 
working uh, with Sauron to create uh, the Rings of Power. So he is the, he is the spirit that inhabits um, Thalia's body. In terms of the, the overall arc of the story, is it, does, it branch, uh, does it branch a lot, or is it a relatively narrative experience, uh, like a single narrative experience? The story um, is a relatively uh, linear narrative experience, but um, it branches in that it leaves uh, the player options to uh, navigate the story structure uh, with freedom. Um, instead of being a, a series of tight plot points that must be followed in a rigorous order, it follows the more open world um, mentality of storytelling where you can encounter different episodes and different characters. It's fundamentally very character driven as opposed to plot driven. And, um, and, and the player has the freedom to, um, almost like an editor, to assemble the various strands of the story together. And if you've played other games I've worked on, you, you know um, how this storytelling is. One of the only times I've cried in a game is because of you, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I hope you'll, uh, you'll enjoy the, the story that we've told. It's, uh, it's an equally powerful story, and of course, it's. Uh, um, it follows that same style of storytelling. Hopefully not the same <laughs> tear-drenching <laughs> ending. Don't go with the barn. <laughs> I can't talk about it. <laughs> no barns, no barns in the there's, there's no barns. So, okay, good. Tell you that. Um, so what sort of precautions did you kind of take to, when you were creating Talia, given that he's a brand new character from Correct, and, you know, doesn't stem through anyone in particular, or a sort of He... He's inspired by uh, a mirage of different characters, but he, he's his own person. Um, we feel like we wanted to be completely um, inspired and respectful of the material, um, but at the same time, we wanted to contribute um, a character who wants to tell the story um, in, a, in, a, in a completely original manner. And, um, and so we found, uh, in a way, we found the ideal way to approach this because really we have two characters. We have uh, a character that's incredibly deeply rooted into the lore of Middle Earth, which is Calabrini. And, and it's not an original character, it's a character we've taken, we've studied, and we've uh, then written into the narrative. And then we have Talion, who is a, a creation based on several of the hero archetypes that uh, the float hero archetypes that Tolkien uh, wrote about. And we've combined these two characters together so that in a way we're carrying on the, the, the inspiration from the drinks Lauren and in the other with the other end we're trying to explore new material. Uh, Chris, I'm very curious, in, in your role as the writer, were you on this project like on day one or had any groundwork uh, been uh, laid down before like in terms of story or, or any of the ideas or characters or did you all come up with that on your own? For, for the story, we were pretty much uh, from on from ground zero um, and you have to because you, you can never just you can never just tack on a story to a game and expect it to have the resonance that, um, that two days old is back from a story in a game. Those, these days are gone and I'm very happy that that's happening. Um, clearly, a, a video game is, uh, involves a huge amount of engineering, technology, development, art, animation, and some of those tasks uh, were already ongoing before you joined the team. But, um, but I'm very happy to say that the story and the game design are really closely interwoven. So um, the story and the, and the game just work together and contribute to like a holistic idea.